It's perfect. Just one thing missing. Apart from food, Wi-Fi, sanitation, and the other components of basic human dignity. <laughs> A ghost story. Hooray! Just don't make up anything that's too scary for the kids. Oh, I won't be making anything up. Because every word of this story is true. <laughs> it happened in these very woods. What's that? Bivamos. We're not in Barcelona, Don Quixote. <laughs> not so long ago, a group of family and friends went camping. Just like us. They pitched up a big tent and lit the fire. Just like us. They were having a fantastic time. Here we enter the realms of fantasy. <laughs> the group went into the forest to look for food. When it got dark and he hadn't returned, they went into the tent, but then they heard someone outside trying to get in. Well, that's the sound of someone knocking on a canvas tent, is it? <laughs> Who's telling this story? Well, it's not Stephen King, that's for sure. <laughs> Who was there? It was a wild-eyed man, stark naked, with all blood coming out of his mouth. And then... He... chopped them all up with a knife. <laughs> a massive big one. That's it, is it? No. And then he put all the body parts in a sack and ran off at the end. Oh, wonderful! And all true. How do you know that? Because the killer... ..was me! <laughs> <laughs> Not really. He's probably still out there in the woods somewhere. Right, inside, Jack. Looks like it's going to rain. I need a toilet, Lee. Well, that's a powerful story. <laughs> I'm not going out there all by myself in the middle of the night, especially after hearing that story. If you see any more firewood, bring it back. Uh, we can always put Lee's guitar on the fire. We've got plenty of wood, thank you, Geoffrey. I know, but let's put the guitar on the fire for fun anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What? There was a movement. You better hurry up then, aren't you? <laughs> Not joking, Lee. Toby? <laughs> it could have been a psycho. Yeah, thank God it was just Peter Rabbit off to buy some crack from Squirrel Nutkin. <laughs> <laughs> This'll do. Well, this is romantic, isn't it? Well, at least it's a lovely full moon. Well, there will be in a minute. <laughs> well, look the other way. Oh, my God. What? It's a bone. You're obviously not chewing properly. <laughs> it's probably just a dead animal. What animal? Well, rabbit. Something a bit bigger, maybe. Like what? Chris Packham? <laughs> We're going. I thought you needed a toilet. Oh, it can wait. You're back quickly. We brought something to show you. Oh, aren't you meant to bury it after you finish? <laughs> Oh, my God, what is that? Just an animal bone, right? Like a deer or something. There are no deer in this forest. Has anyone seen a deer? I haven't seen a deer. I'll be just passing through. Oh, yeah, maybe it was flying overhead on Christmas Eve and had a heart attack. <laughs> it's a cow bone. A cow? In a forest? 
Did it fall out of its nest? I'm saying it's a cow bone from a butcher's that a dog was probably carrying. Are you sure it's not a human bone? Of course it's not a human bone. Why would it be a human bone? I said it wasn't a human bone. Can we all stop saying human bone? <laughs> we need to show it to Toby. He'll know. He's a doctor. Toby isn't here. He's still not back. Maybe a little part of him is here. <laughs> of course, if we'd gone somewhere with phone reception, we could have called the police and reported him missing. Calm down, Anna. You're perfectly safe in here. Oh, yes, perfectly safe behind this unbreachable, monster-proof sheet of thin nylon. <laughs> Not the least friendly welcome she's ever given me. Something happened. What is it, Rod? It started raining. Is that it? Yeah. Hunter-gatherer returns to the village with food for the tribe. Something terrifically primeval about that, don't you think? All he's done is get Kit Kats from his Lexus. You were gone for bloody ages. I thought you'd driven off and left me. It never occurred to me to do that. I couldn't have driven off anyway. While I was in the car, I turned the radio on to get the weather report and... I'm afraid I have some rather alarming news. What? The rain earlier has flooded the river further up the valley. The road out of here is under three feet of water. But we need to drive out of here tomorrow to get more food. It's not going to happen, I'm afraid. So we need to eke out these supplies for as long as... <laughs> right. I should probably have started with that advice. The weather report doesn't explain why you took so long coming back. Well, no. I... Is there something else you're not telling us? I didn't want to mention this. But the weather report finished, and then... Go on. It was time for the archers. <laughs> Bloody hell, Toby! We thought something serious had happened. I'd say foot and mouth at Grange Farm is fairly serious. <laughs> Have I missed something? Wow, you were hungry. I don't know which child you ate, but at least it stopped them playing with their iPad, eh, Lucy? This bone was found in the woods. It's caused a bit of a commotion. Would you please confirm, using your medical expertise, that it isn't human? This is the fibula of an animal. Ah! <laughs> Can you name the animal? I don't know. Two go with Sparky. <laughs> I think cow bone carried by a dog. Probably. So we've solved the mystery. Yes, it's a relief to know we can all starve to death in relative safety. <laughs> well, there's no need to go hungry. I noticed something on the walk up here. Please say Pret. Even better. We are in nature's kitchen. We are surrounded by edible plants. Well, aren't some of these plants poisonous? Easily solved. We simply test everything out on Lee. <laughs> Not necessary. I was the secretary of the Oxford University Postgraduate Foraging Society. But I mean, even by my standards, that's a very poncy sentence. 